This week on Launch, here are six new launches to keep you up with the future of accounting tech. We're talking how to use Zapier to call a zap inside your zap, unlimited client portals for less than a hundred bucks a month, and new Tony Nitty content. I know, right? All that and more on this week's Launch for Accountants. Senta, a cloud-based practice management system, has launched its own Zapier integration. I'm a big advocate of integrations first software companies. Too many withhold integrations because they think they know best, or even worse, because they have a conflicting partnership. Boo. That's why we need to recognize the good that Senta's doing here, rolling out their own Zapier integration, and it is a great Zapier integration. But first, what the heck is Senta? I didn't know what they were before I stumbled upon this. They're a cloud-based practice management system for accountants and bookkeepers. Got all the goodies you would expect from a project management system, but it's also got direct integrations with QBO and Xero. But today we're talking Zapier integrations, and it is a good one. Not one of those low effort like contacts only Zapier integrations. So let's cruise through these. First thing you'll notice is there's a lot of them. Second is that they're all instant. That means they're webhooks. The best part about webhooks means you don't have to be on the super expensive Scrooge McDuck Enterprise Premium Zapier plan for your zaps to run every minute. That's a non-issue. They run right away no matter the plan that you're on. So triggers, new and updated clients. Can't tell you how many times I've seen a trigger just for new clients not for client updates, which makes it useless. Six different actions for job statuses and when time records are created or updated. Four actions, create or update a client, accept a proposal and create a note. So props to Senta. This is a great Zapier integration and a model to other practice management software companies of how to get away from platform lock-in. Senta plans start at just 29 bucks per month. Check this one out at senta.co. Exciting news here, Conversion, a GPT-3 copywriter has acquired Headline, another tool we recently featured. A lot of acronyms there. What does this actually mean? GPT-3 is an AI tool that uses machine learning to produce text that looks like it's written by a human. It was released in 2020 and is a big step forward in computer-generated text. A lot of buzzwords there, but the big news here is Headline, who was previously doing its own GPT-3 sorcery, has now been acquired by Conversion, so all that's happening under one roof. I'm still confused. Okay, so here's how conversion works. You give it a prompt, something like a paragraph, and then you decide what type of output you want. It'll write your website copy. It'll write you Facebook ads, outline a blog post, generate SEO optimized blog topic ideas, write your YouTube titles, and even do long form writing. So let's put it to the test. I've plugged in everything I've said so far about conversion into conversion. You pick the audience type that you're writing for. I'm gonna say accountants, and I want a witty tone. Here's what it's come up with. Three questions you need to ask before you open a new office. How to prepare for an audit in the age of AI. Why I didn't go to university. Three ways to reduce costs for startups and small businesses. 12 reasons you need to be paying your tax bill before the end of this month. I'm an accountant. I'm not good at writing clickbait titles. Those are pretty good clickbait titles. Now, if you wanna target this even more, you can train it further with example blog posts. So if you've already got a bunch of blog posts, you could feed all those in there. And it's gonna tailor it based on the content you've written about in the past. Now, one more exercise here that was too good to miss. One of the output types is bad marketing ideas. So I plugged all the same inputs in, set the audience to accountants, and here's what we got. Use GPT-3 to create a book about copywriting. Each chapter will consist of the first 100,000 words generated by GPT-3. That is a bad idea. Create a fake accountant persona, Paul Narbs. Then hire him to do Fiverr gigs and say conversion is audited by Paul Narbs. That is something else. Publish a book with GPT-3 about taxes, perhaps an absurdly priced coffee table book to collect dust on everyone's shelf, and buy or murder famous public speakers and then replace them with fake people to give a speech. So check that one out at conversion.ai. Starts at just 29 bucks per month. Update from Zapier that may not seem like a big deal, but I think it's huge. You can now call a sub zap from inside another zap. So you got your main zap rolling along and one of the actions can be a sub zap. You can pass variables into it and take outputs from the result. Pretty basic, right? But has some really powerful implications. For example, let's say you got a whole bunch of zaps rolling along and many of these zaps have common components like saving to a file system. Now, if you wanted to change that aspect of all of the zaps, it's gonna require hopping in and doing that in every single zap. That's a big pain in the neck. Instead, now what you can do is design a single sub zap and then reuse that sub zap in all of these other zaps. So when it comes time to make a change, all you do is you change the sub zap and that change is automatically reflected in all the other parent zaps. 
pretty neat. And that's actually how grown up developers design code. They try to make it modular so that you can reuse bits of it throughout the program. So get to making those zaps more modular and read about this one over on the Zapier blog. When was the last time you had to get something notarized? Were you happy about it? Did it feel like a quaint, old timey experience? Do I have news for you? You don't have to do that crap anymore. Notarize.com is an online service for you guessed it, getting stuff notarized. You're coming off a fresh round of funding and frankly, I can't see why you would go back to doing it the way we used to. The process is pretty simple. You upload the documents you need notarized, go through a couple steps to verify your identity, hop on a two-way video call with the notary. It's super uncomfortable. And after a brief period of discomfort, having a face-to-face -face with a stranger, you've got notarized documents. Download them right away and get home in time to squeeze your kids before they go to bed. They've got a dedicated service for title companies, but for the rest of us, you pay 25 bucks at the end of the process and feel slightly irritated that this is all still a thing. So head over to notarize.com to learn more. Running a business generates a lot of documents and wrangling that crap oftentimes is more work than you'd think. Google's got a new entry into the document management space called Stack, and it looks pretty nifty. It's a smartphone document scanner that uses artificial intelligence to categorize these documents because human intelligence simply couldn't be bothered. It's gonna decide if it's a receipt, a bill, something else, and automatically drop it into that bucket. Now, it's still early days. For now, it's only available on Android and is US only because evidently foreign documents could not be trusted, but a more fully featured version of this tool could be super useful. If you think about the helpful API endpoints you see from the rest of Google's suite of tools, wouldn't it be nice to be able to trigger workflows each time a completed document was processed? Like drop your bills over here, drop your receipts over there. Got some other tools on the market solving for this right now, but oftentimes they're overkill and something simple like this might be nice. So we'll keep an eye on this one to see how it progresses. You can take it for a spin right now if you're on Android. Check this one out over at stack.area120.com. Do you remember what it was like when you first started your business? Maybe you're just getting started right now. I got an interesting read here called First 1,000. It's a collection of stories about how founders got their very first 1,000 customers. And there's some incredibly creative stuff in here. Things like how Airbnb used cereal to bankroll their early stage business. How Spotify totally faked their product to get initial users and how Tinder started out as a guest list for sorority parties. I love these kind of stories. I think they're relevant not just to startups, but to those of us exploring a new niche or looking for guerrilla marketing opportunities. You never know what harebrained idea is going to take your business into a new space or open the door to your ideal customer. Check this one out at first1000.co. When you sign up, they're gonna send you a new case study each Sunday. That is enough fun and games for this week. If you're not on our weekly newsletter, head over to launchfa.com. Get that to your inbox every Sunday. This week, we recapped the top tools of Q1. Exciting stuff. We'll be back next week with more tomfoolery. We'll see you then.